Men, if we're going to fight a spiritual war, we need the best weapons and train well to use them. I'm Brian Patrick, and as we continue our series on spiritual warfare, putting on the armor of God is our topic this time on Crossing the Goal. As we continue our series on spiritual warfare here on Crossing the Goal, we're kicking off our show about putting on the armor of God. Let's meet our Crossing the Goal team. They've got their battle armor on. Peter Herbeck of Renewal Ministries. From Focus, the Fellowship of Catholic University Students, we have Curtis Martin. And our all-pro wide receiver and former NFL coach, Danny Abramowitz. Gentlemen, it's good to have you back together again. Of course, we're entering the next phase of this series, Peter. Yeah, the first four shows we looked at what we're up against. We started with the war, the big picture. Then we talked about the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's the unholy trinity that we're up against in the battle. But now we're shifting toward how do we win the battle? How does how has the Lord Jesus equipped us to live in the victory, his victory, over all those forces? You know, when we talk about the victory, one of the things that drives me a little bit crazy about the, uh, the way that Catholics think about this is we, we kind of fall back to, well, at least we know that the, the battle, the war's been won. And we sit on the sidelines. And it's true, the, the war's been won, but the margin of victory is completely up for grabs right now. And what we need to do is get in the game, get in the battle, because there are souls at stake that will live or not live forever. And so we really want to encourage men to step up, put the armor on, and go to war. When we talk about war, that's true, but we have skirmishes and battles every single day. When we wake up in the morning, we need to be, be, be able to prepare ourselves to defend ourselves. And how do we do that? We put on the armor, like prayer of faith, intercessor of Mary and the saints, defend us, St. Michael the Archangel, and the Holy Spirit protect us. Amen. All right, we're going into spiritual battle. We need to put on that armor of God, and for that, we need a game plan. Coming up next on Crossing the Goal, the game plan with Peter and Curtis. Stay with us. Our topic is spiritual warfare, and specifically we're looking at a biblical passage in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians in chapter 6, which encourages us to put on the full armor of God. I'm Curtis Martin with Focus. This is Peter Herbeck with Renewal Ministries. Peter, when we look at this, what does the scripture tell us about the full armor of God? Well, let's look at Paul. He starts in verse 10, chapter 6. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I love that. Be strong. Where do we get our strength? In the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers and against rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. One of the things you see for Paul, he uses the phrase stand. He'll use it three times in this section. And in his mind, what he's, he's saying is, look. You were once under the domination of the world, the flesh, and the devil. You didn't have a way out. Jesus came, broke those powers, and he's taken you out of that whole regime of powers, and he set you on a new land. He set you in a new relationship with God. He's given you new freedom and a new power and a new capacity, and he's directed you now to heaven. He's given you a, an ability to live a new way of life. Now stand in what he's given you. So that's the first exhortation. Don't give up the turf. Yeah, it was graciously right. given to you. He took All the right. land for you. Yeah, let's yeah. continue on. So we, go, we continue in verse 13 of chapter 6. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. So we've got a command to take up the full armor. And then we list six portions of the armor that we're supposed to have. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition... To all, taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all of the flaming missiles of the evil one, and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So let's walk through these six aspects of the, the full armor of God and what they say. To gird your loins with truth. What are we talking about? We're talking about truth as a person from a Christian point of view. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. How do we, what's the truth we lay hold of? Jesus reveals the truth about man, who we are, where we've come from, 
why we're here. Yeah, and I think if we look in the biblical narrative, we'll also see there's a certain sense we're girding our loins with truth. There's a sense that we need to have a purity of body if we're going to serve God. A lot of us just fall in this area of not living in the truth, and so we are not, we're not equipped in that part of our lives. All right, the, the breastplate of righteousness. Now, this is what protects our heart, to walk in upright deeds, to walk in the deeds the Lord has given us. First of all, we put on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That is, we live, we put on the person of Jesus, we stand in the Lord, we don't present ourselves as righteous and save ourselves and enter into heaven. We get that from standing in Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness, it says. He became sin for us, he purified us, and we stand now in a new relationship with God. But he also has equipped us, it says in Ephesians, to walk, right? He says, you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Walking in these upright deeds the Lord has called us to is a protection for us in the Christian life. It doesn't let the devil get access to us. Yeah, again, you said we were given new turf to defend. The greatest turf we've been given to defend is our heart, and so we're given a breastplate of righteousness to provide defense there. So shod your feet with the gospel of peace. Right. Gospel of peace. Gospel means what? Good news. The good news of peace. What does that mean? First of all, Jesus restored a relationship between us and God the Father. Where there was hostility, Jesus has brought peace through his death on the cross. And peace between Jew and Gentile. Peace between men. Jesus said, my I my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. So he's given us a new relationship with the Father and a new capacity to live differently with one another in peace. Then he says, now gospel means go, send, right? And he says, now go share that peace with others. Blessed are those, you know, on the mountains who have, you know, who bring good news, that right. one passage says in the Old Testament. Isaiah, sure. so, yeah, in Isaiah. No, that's, I think you're highlighting the go gospel that we need to recognize. This is a commission that we've been called to go. So put on your shoes and let's get to, get to work. All right, shield of faith. I love this with this image. You know, the Roman soldiers, sometimes their shields were made of thick leather and they would dip them, they'd soak them in water because the enemy, if, remember the movie, uh, The Gladiator, yeah. or those different kind of movies, they shoot those arrows that are, that have a flaming tip on them. I have seven sons. It's like my backyard. Yeah, that's right. It looks like your backyard. <laughs> and the shield, that, what, that shield that's wet, absorbs the arrows, and then it puts out the fire. Yep. Now here, that's the image Paul gives us. And he says, the shield of faith. We stand in the faith and the truth that Christ has given us, the faith we believe in, because the devil's constantly lying to us. Yep. He said, you're, you're condemned. You're no good. You're not going to heaven. God doesn't love you. You're all alone in the world. And how do you fight that stuff? You stand up and you stand in the truth, the faith. I'm a son of God. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Helmet of salvation. Here we protect the mind by being tuned into God's plan for salvation for us. That's the big picture. Where's our life headed? Are we destined for glory to live with God forever? And the sword of the Spirit was the Word of God. This is the one offensive weapon that we're given. You know, this is a, the Word of God is a sword. It's living, it's active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's how Jesus went after the devil when the devil tried to attempt, tried to tempt him. So the devil's going to try to confuse us and deceive us. We need to lay hold of that word and wield the sword at the devil. And it takes some training. I mean, to learn how to use a sword takes some time. One of the things that Pope Benedict said that was, I think, so important is that he really believed that the new springtime of evangelization would occur when Catholics were reading the scriptures on a personal daily level, what we call Lexio Divina, that deep, personal, prayerful reading of the scriptures. That'll allow us to wield that sword effectively. Brian? Great game plan for putting on the armor of God. Thanks, gentlemen. Coach Danny, that armor of God will protect us a little bit better uh, than maybe shoulder pads and helmets down there in the red zone. Yeah, you can tell I played several games without a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's head to the red zone as we put on the armor of God next here on Crossing the Goal. We're in the red zone on crossing the goal. Putting on the armor of God is our topic as we continue our series on spiritual warfare. And we really need to understand our enemy. If, you know, if we're wimpy when the devil comes at us, he's going to take us. But if we stand up to him and resist, the apostles told us, resist and he will flee. I guess the, the thing we really need to avoid is this spiritual indifference. Yeah, you know, I love Paul's exhortation. He's so clear. Stand, stand, stand. To be a Christian, to be disciples, to live in a constant state of being alert being alive, be ready to, for battle each and every day. But it's easy. We live in a culture that sort of puts us to sleep, you know, mm -hmm. entertains us 24-7.
gets us as cozy as you can be. And this is really not our home. We forget this is not our home. Our real home's in heaven. And this is a battlefield. This is not Disneyland. This is a battlefield <laughs> that we're called to fight on. Yeah, it just it doesn't stop there because it, it kind of snowballs. If we're indifferent, then all of a sudden we get in trouble. You know, yeah. Idle hands of the devil's workshop. And so we have to recognize there's many examples. I think the best one might be David in the Old Testament where you've got a, guy, a man who was a, a man after God's own heart. He's done so many great things. But we're told it was springtime, the time that the kings went out to war. And David's home relaxing, not doing his job. And what does he do? Takes a walk on the roof, looks over, there's Bathsheba, and the rest is literally history. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, w but if it could happen to David, it could happen to any one of us. Yeah. We need to be busy and active as soldiers for our Lord. Yeah. And, you know, we've talked about defending ourselves against the enemy. We do we've done a good job, I think, explaining that. But we need to protect ourselves against ourselves. And what I mean by that is, you know, we have a choice sometimes of what we want to do in life or how our attitude is. We can wake up in the morning and be, want to be in a bad attitude. You yeah. can be in a bad mood. Yeah. Or uh, we wake up lazy. We wake up aggra aggravated. We wake up uh, not wanting to do this. I, I don't want to do this. I, I give up on this. I'm tired of fighting all this stuff. Yeah. Let, let, I'm not, I'm not going to get involved with this stuff. So our attitude, we've got to protect ourselves. We need to be positive in, in what we do and, and be, have a plan each day. Yeah. We want to do this and be careful. The, uh, the enemy will come, yeah. and he's going to use us against ourselves. We talked about him being patient. Yes. So when we wake up in those bad attitudes, he's ready to pounce. Oh yeah. yeah. So much of the battle, so much of the battle is right here. It's right here in the mind. You it's know, and he want, we, You know, we can get up. We can have a, just a lousy attitude about ourselves. You know, I'm no good. You know, my right. life is heading in the toilet. I'm nobody. Whatever inherited tapes that we live with, the background noise of our life. You know, the devil kind of circles. It says, you know, he looks for that weakness. And as soon as we're vulnerable, he goes, yeah, you're right. You are a loser. There's no hope for you. You're not going anywhere in life. Right. And then this downward spot, you've got to stand up. Uh, or See, I'm a son of God. That, Go to hell, right. Satan. Or he'll use the uh, opposite of that, your ego, your pride. Right. That I don't need anybody. Whatever I works for him. Yeah, whatever, whatever works. works. He, you just got to know what your Achilles right. heel is. You've got to stand up and say, oh, I can smell him. Here he comes. And stand against him. Wouldn't I told you to be protected? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we're talking about putting on the armor. And, and Peter, maybe starting with you, but I'd love to get your all's thoughts on this. How, how do you do that? But we talked before, Peter, about you, know, you have learned over the years to kind of season your thoughts and your words with the Word of God. Yeah. And to, uh, but how, how do you go about doing that? Because well, it's going to be intimidating when you yeah. see somebody, wow, he knows a lot of the yeah. Bible. You weren't yeah. born that no, way. No, I was not. You know, it, that's the one offensive weapon, the wield, right? The sword is what Paul tells us. So things to do. Read that scripture every day. You know, the Holy Spirit wants to help us understand it, the Lexio Divina thing that you're talking about. That just means reading, like, say, the life of Jesus in the gospel, slowly read a passage, ask the Holy Spirit to help you know the truth. Say, put that truth inside my heart and mind. And the Holy Spirit will teach us. Yeah. Memorize scripture. That's a very powerful tool. Uh, get involved in a Bible study. Yeah. You know, get involved in a good Catholic Bible study somewhere with other guys and other people and start devouring that word, yeah. chewing on it. The Pope says, like a cow chews on its cut, right. chew on it. Suck all the juices out of it, and he said, "Keep chewing on it, and sooner or later it'll start forming your mind. And it'll how start it changing applies you." To your life, take it yeah. at the present that's what, time. Yeah, that's what those studies help do. Yeah. You know, another thing I like to do is praying in the spirit. It says pray, but I pray in the spirit. And I say, "What's praying in the spirit?" Well, you know, we can only say words down here. Our Father, Hail Mary. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Well, when you pray in the spirit, you sort of let yourself get in and allow the spirit to take over. Lord, I love you. I praise you. I worship you. You, you say these words and all of a sudden it's sort of like you're, you're being led by the Spirit. Yeah. Lord, you, I need you. I'm so weak. I'm so vulnerable. When he hears that, a humbleness. If you look about all the saints, it was Absolutely. about humility. And that's why I try to pray like I need it. Because if not, I take over too much myself. When I get myself involved, look out, I'm in trouble. Yeah, we've talked about getting on your knees. Now, yes. a lot of people might say, why do I need to pray on my knees? For me, it is that act of humility, but it's also something very tangible that I can do. Yeah. I don't get out of bed and stand up. I get out of bed and roll directly onto my knees. That's great. And, and when I get in bed, I do the same. And there's something about it that connects me. Well, it's, it puts me where I need to be. It's, it's me and God, you know, I'm on my knees before him. Just today at Mass, when you were at Mass earlier, I was just asking the Lord about, thinking about the helmet of salvation thing, and I was just meditating. I said, Lord, well, help me understand why the rosary is such a powerful instrument. Yes, and he right. said, because it's salvation history. It's the helmet of right. salvation. Because right. the, the rosary is taking us through everyday meditations on what God has done, what Jesus has done, and it forms your heart and mind. You start living in the truth. Yeah. 
you know? You know, so, go ahead. No, go you ahead. go. No, you go. No, 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 you go. No, 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 it's not the best perspective unless you're seeing things the way that God sees things. You have a Christ-centered worldview. And when we, when we understand and have our head turned because we've got the helmet of salvation on, that is a yeah. huge issue for me. Yeah. You know, I've, I was praying about this, guys, and then the Lord sort of put on my heart. You know, we, we NFL training camps, they go through basic training. Mm -hmm. In the Army, your, your son's in the Army at the Military Academy and, and soldiers, they go through basic training. Well, we have to go through some basic training. He sort of put this on my heart. I'd like to share it with you guys. Would, the, would anyone dare to send our soldiers into battle untrained or unprepared? Right. See, they go foolish. to boot camp. You know, Boy, we don't is. dare. We have to go through a boot camp. We have to get training. Yeah, where is that Catholic boot camp? We yes, have to, yeah. we, we have to uh, exactly create spend so with. much time taking care of our physical, mental, and social things. Yeah. But how much time are we really spending on the spiritual part that lasts forever? Yeah. Next. We don't spend nowhere near enough time in our spiritual basic training. You know, we got to spend time. In order to be good at it, you didn't spend right. one hour a week to learn no. scriptures or, or evangelize or anything like that. Next is, do we think that one hour a week going to Mass is the answer? Yeah. So many right. Catholics live and wonder why they're getting, I don't get anything out of it. What, what are you putting into it? Yeah. The Lord's going to, He'll help you. The one hour a week is not going to get it. And finally, do you realize that the consequences of this battle, that it's not a just a game, and we talked about yeah. this, this has eternal consequences. Makes me think of a St. Ignatius used to say to young men that he was training, he said, you know, you ought to blush with shame when you think of how the men of time pursue the things of time with greater dedication and passion than we do the things of eternity. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the ways he used to inspire in young men to say, you know, that's absolutely true. The world is going whole hog for what's here and we can easily forget the eternal consequences and that something the spirit wants to stir in our hearts and if we get underneath and say just tell the truth say holy spirit help me you know i'm lazy i'm slothful i don't think about this very much i don't actually care about it very much to tell you the truth but i want to i need you to change my heart and the holy spirit will do that that's interesting i was flying into uh, i believe atlanta the other day flying over the city and looking at these huge skyscrapers in this enormous city and thinking of all the planning and effort that it goes into building a city and, and wondering how much effort we put into our spiritual lives when all of that means nothing. Well, when that day of rest. <laughs> the end of the day, true. It means nothing. Yeah. And you start thinking about, I, I reflected back also in my own personal life, you know, we try to get personal down in this area, is it, it just didn't happen overnight. You yeah. know, I had to, on prayer because I didn't really want to pray. It took up time and your mind starts going in other, oh, I got to get on this. I got to do this. You just got to make up your mind and say, I don't need to do 50 things. Just start out praying a few 50 minutes, 20 minutes a day and try to go to mass maybe one other time. All these various things to try to help you. Read the scripture every day. Need, read the Bible yeah. every day. You we've got to approach this as men because you sit back and say, well, I don't want to. Yeah, right. Really, you don't yeah. want to? Come on, sissy, get up and do the right thing. Yeah, what right. football player? Oh, I don't want to run. Right. No, you yeah. get up and do it. And I think sometimes we approach the faith yeah. as if it should be a, a source of entertainment for us. And it's not. This is serious stuff. Yeah. When yeah. Christ speaks about point. this, when Paul speaks about this, this is a, an invitation to man up. Yeah. And I think right. unless we approach it that way as men, we're not going to find it uh, Man engaging up, at stand all. up. That's yeah, good. And when we do approach it that way, it, it takes on a whole new Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You know, right, we yeah. really want to do that. Yeah. The, the rosary, I, I know you mentioned that. I like to get up in the morning and start with that, whether I feel like it or not, oh. just yeah. start with Would it. Would we do walking yesterday when we all went Prayed the walking. rosary yeah. and the Divine Mercy Chapel. Uh, that's it. We tried team. to keep up with Danny. We tried to keep up with Danny. Right. It was kind of hard, but we you got guys there. couldn't do it. Push that yeah, pace. I'll slow down. Just, for you. I'm gonna slow, you slow down. down for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, All right, these that. guys all have a chance at the last word coming up from the end zone next, and we'll check out our email bag here on Crossing the Goal. We hope you'll stay with us. Jesus wants this personal relationship with us. You know, we meet him in the words of the Gospels. You know, we hear about him in the letters of the New Testament, you know, God is like throughout the entire Bible, all the stories in the Bible, from the beginning to the end, um, we get to know Jesus, and, um, and he's talking to us directly. Those words, you know, they just cut right through time, and he's talking to us today. 
just like he spoke to Peter and the rest of his disciples. We're now in the end zone on our series on uh, spiritual warfare. The episode this week is putting on the armor of God. Before we get to our closing remarks from the team, let's take a look at our email bag. Got an email from Charles who says, I think the effect of media on adolescents and everyone else for that matter is way overlooked. From internet pornography to glamorizing or trivializing drugs, kids have to learn the hard way. Your show and ministries are more important than ever. Danny? Yeah, I swear, guys, all you see uh, nowadays is young people on the cell phone texting, doing all these kind of things. <laughs> look, <laughs> look at these what's guys. Up? Look at these I'm sorry, guys. What's, I was distracted. Uh, no, yeah, sorry. that's what I'm talking young about. People. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Young people. Yeah, yeah. Young people. These are... Seriously, though, it's not just young people. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this the other day. We really struggle. It, the, the amount of distraction coming in. And it's even if it's not opposed to the Christ, it's distracting from Christ. Yeah. And we need to form our minds rather than be conformed to this world. I mean, we, we have the challenge of creating, the need to create more silence in our lives, more quiet to be recollected, to be able to follow the Lord. And it's not so easy with all this technology. No. So we're exhorting each other all the time to try to, you know, dial down, put it aside when you can't, only use it when you can and manage it. And it's a constant discipline. It well, really one, is. one other thing that's caused a problem with it, it's the social skills to be able to talk right. with one right. another. Now everything's by you know you can become it's all brave. by your thumbs. You can be brave, a hundred right. miles away telling somebody, but tell yeah. someone to yeah. their communication skills are poor. In a related email now from Sal, he says, "I watch sports on another network, and the advertisements sometimes get me sick." He says, "Is it wrong to watch anyway, despite these advertisements?" I'd say just watch crossing the goal. 24 <laughs> 7 no i'm kidding the what we i end up doing usually is i mute commercials one because yeah. they're too loud you notice how much louder the commercials yeah. are over there again i just by mute design. them by habit now yeah and it helps it we helps. have a, kind of a double one we we tivo so you skip right through them uh and the other one is and it's really kind of fun to watch even my young sons when this commercials come on avert the eyes because you don't know what's coming on next and there's just this habit to look away and because you never know, and particularly when you're watching sports shows, there tend to be a lot of immodest commercials and to Very be able to sit back and yeah. say, we're, we're done. So fast forward and look away. I'll tell you what we do. My wife and I, we uh, have EWTN on and we're watching a football game or something. When it comes to the commercials, we're just next. It goes back to the last one and EWTN. There you go. Great suggestions. All right, gentlemen, let's get the last word now on putting on the armor of God, beginning with Peter. Friends, the scripture says the Lord is a warrior. And you heard today from St. Paul challenging each and every one of us to put on the armor, to become warriors. That, that's a decision that we have to make ourselves. Lord, I want to get in the fight. I want to put on this armor. Make that decision today, and the Lord will anoint you specifically to win victory in your life. Good word. Listen to what St. Paul has to say to us, gentlemen. Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier for Christ Jesus. No soldier in active service, entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Guys, this is about focus. It's about getting our attention on what's most important, about fixing our eyes on the Lord and allowing his desires to become our desires, to not get entangled with all the stuff in this world that can so easily keep us from being fruitful. Good, guys. Men, think about this. Football players, they have helmets, shoulder pads, other pads to protect themselves from injury. Then you look at the soldier. The soldier has a helmet. He has protective gear to protect himself from wounds or even death. Spiritual warriors need to put on the helmet and the various protective devices, the armor that Peter and Curtis talked about and in Ephesians 6.10. That's what you need to do. Put that armor on to protect you spiritually. All right, gentlemen. Great shout out too to our soldiers watching on the American Forces Network. We appreciate you being with us on Crossing the Goal each week, wherever you are across the world, and know that our prayers are with you. Next week, we're going to fight the battle for the mind on Crossing the Goal. For Peter Herbeck, Curtis Martin, Coach Danny Abramowitz, I'm Brian Patrick. We'll see you next time here on Crossing the Goal. <laughs> As we continue our series on spiritual warfare, we're cooking. <laughs> cooking.
Here's the blooper. Yeah. <laughs> no, we won't and use Brian that. And Brian loves yeah. it when right. bloopers are on him. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, crud. We won't use that. I mean, no, that will never happen. Take 500. <laughs> <laughs>